out to say I love you. People, welcome everybody to the Shark Shooters <laughs> a Saturday edition. Many is five pints in. It's gonna be a jam packed show, and you five guys five. have to understand. You guys have to understand something. Manny already hit me because if you pay close attention to the <laughs> thumbnail, the, the 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 logo was not centered, and Manny has oh, sent two favorite. messages. He has sent a message to the group with me and Marcus talking about he was five pints in, and then he sent one. He was like, "Center that shit," and I was like, "Manny's drunk." I'm not going to be upset that he told me what to do. To be fair, though, I was, more, I was coherent because I was three points in when I sent you that message. Yes. <laughs> However, the problem with this was that this was not my original thumbnail. My original thumbnail was actually this one. But then I realized it did not jive with the title of Roman and Cody facing off. No, it had but, all the side characters in the story. It didn't have Rock and Cody in the story. Why, so why? it's just like... You know, Seth needs to be questioned why he just because he can beat Shinsuke Nakamura does not mean he can dress like Shinsuke Nakamura. I you know what? Was, I didn't. I tried just, to put together. Yeah, he was. I was like thinking Jimmy about who he was dressed like. Yeah, he was dressed like Jimmy to me. Like if you play Connect the Dots, Jimmy is dressed like <laughs> is he Seth, Jimmy, and Jay is dressed like Solo. <laughs> but then there was a picture that I had that I like this title because man, Kyrie done fucked up. You can't pull that braid like that. She's uh, she's in trouble. I just want to yell, world star! <laughs> but then, I, I, paid to that shit here. I paid attention to the Thursday show, and Marcus had made a requirement. Marcus says he cannot be ready until there's a white woman on his screen. I told him, say, and I was trying <laughs> I was trying hard to find a white woman, but then, That's you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the people with Paul Ellering blocked Scarlet. So the only white woman I could kind of find was Dakota Kai in this... In the, because I want to make sure Marcus was starting. Because Marcus had to be <laughs> no, starting. Eric, Eric, you need to go to the you need to go to the shop. You need to go to the shop where I feel like I'm gonna look like that image later. Is when uh <laughs> Bianca is holding Naomi over the bin and it looks like yeah. Naomi is throwing up and Tiffany <laughs> Stratton yeah. is just standing. Over them, like, what the yeah. fuck's going on here? Yeah, <laughs> but honestly, yeah, the one, the one that, that I wanted that I knew nobody would care about me having was this one because this is only for me. You know what? Fuck Rey yeah. Mysterio, mm -hmm. you a bad father. We're gonna have a repeat of WrestleMania from yeah. last year. Is that your spirit animal standing behind him? That, that that short lady with the red hair, that Becky Lynch cosplayer talking about the age. Nah, yeah, nah that's that's that looks that's like Eric's spirit animal. You know who that is? You know who that is? Cindy Lopper? Tegan Knox. That's allergic needs all written all over that. <laughs> so, like I said, welcome to the Sharpshooters podcast. I am Eric. Oh, I'm, I'm five bucks today. Man. Trying to sober up with a croissant. Ooh, is that from Greg? No, ha. no, it's just a croissant. So, so Manny, oh. unfortunately, I hate that you are, uh, are intoxicated for this situation because M Marcus and I had a conversation. Um, earlier in the week, and we were upset <laughs> with ourselves hey, because serious. we were we were we were uh, stumped, and we could not figure <laughs> this out. And so, therefore, we decided we wanted to know what out any preparation, Manny. Can you tell Marcus and I who the current AEW International Champion is? Can you tell us without looking it up? Just off the front. Can you tell us? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Betty, it took us 25 minutes trying oh, to wait. figure this shit out. I know. It took, I know. Yeah, I know uh -oh. this. Who is it? Hmm. Let, me, let me cool down. Let me cool down. <laughs> Eric! <laughs> I believe. Eric! I believe it's that guy. That guy that no one cares about. His name is Roger Strong. And he's very bored. Betty. Yeah, Betty. It, we were stumped. Good job, Betty. Good Betty. job. But I, that squint in your eye, that real quick of, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, he was worried. was exactly Marcus, how we were for Marcus, about 20 minutes going, no, we're going to figure this out. Marcus, that look in my eye was, oh, he's asking me real shit. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, cause, cause I, when we had the conversation. Shit just got real. When we asked the conversation, I was getting ready for that. I was like, yeah, we're going to make sure we're going to see if Manny was going to get that. And, and Manny, you, you you know what? I almost was going to print out a Magnus picture and mail it to you, but I decided I don't have your new address. And so I'm not going to do that to you. Hold on. Is it Magnus and Luchador? The main, the main reason why you never will get my real address. No, Marcus. Yeah. It's, it's, Hold it's, on. It's is Marcus. it Magnus and Luchador or is it Nick Magnus Aldis? No, Margaret, it is a uh, broke arm <laughs> Nick Aldis, Marcus. It's actually a really nice picture. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The man, was, the man with his toy tore his arm. 
doing nothing. I don't so, know what happened, but he did nothing. This is why this man doesn't he wrestle just felt anymore. Like he needed surgery. That's what it was. <laughs> so, like, got, oh, so I, I would like to start this. Mickey, uh, look show at my off. arm. <laughs> I want to start the show off because you know. Brian Danielson was talking. He did this quote at South by Southwest. He said, realistically, it's not just that particular Tuesday night. It's every Wednesday and every week you're battling something. Danielson adds, you're not just battling other shows. You're battling people's addiction to their phones and all sorts of things. How do you keep people's attention? In my mind, it keeps going back to this ideal of quality. Something I've said when I first joined AEW is that if you put out excellent professional wrestling, people will tune in. That's the goal weekly. Put on an excellent professional wrestling show. Now, <coughs> that that being said, AEW had their week and they got another 800,000 views. So they didn't fall off from last week. Manny, do you think this approach of putting on good wrestling without anything else, just good wrestling, could be a way to sustain a company going forward? I think you misinterpreted it. No, it's, I, I feel like it's, it, it, it doesn't attract casuals, but I don't feel like AEW is that bothered about attracting casuals. I feel like they're they're after the main wrestling purists. Purists, correct word. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't feel like I don't feel like that's a success. I don't feel like that's a successful business model when you're especially on national TV. I feel like you need to have storylines to draw people in and have an ending like a cliffhanger that will make people want to come back next week because realistically what they did this week was put on collision and we all no, not collision rampage and we all know what we think of rampage when you hear the word rampage you don't really want to watch it even though they had a great main event most people were probably checked out most people probably would have man, checked out and not watch rampage this man is spitting down here marcus how do you feel manny right now five pints in this is the man i waited for the lord manny right this is his five email pints. And Marcus, your boy Brian Davidson, you said I may have misinterpreted what he meant. Break that I, think down both, I, think, I think both of you guys, and I think even I, I'm not going to say I'm in an instant, until I reheard you read the quote and not just going by my poor reading comprehension skills, I'm going to say we all misheard. Because he doesn't say great pro wrestling matches ever in that paragraph. He only says a great pro re- professional wrestling show. And there, by saying that, I agree with him because a great professional wrestling show isn't a great show about just great matches. It is about the story and context similar to what Manny said. And currently, AW may not be doing that kind of business, but I understand what he's saying, that people will come with quality of anything. If a TV show has good quality, people will come out eventually. Like, there's there's shows that weren't successful in their early ages like uh, The Wire, Breaking Bad, but found Second Life in DVD and streaming that people were like, hold on, I'm just going to leave. I know you're acknowledging me, Manny. I appreciate it. <laughs> I am your tribal I'm not. chief. I'm my hand up. <laughs> no, 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 no. We can see out hand. You are not my tribal chief. I hold, I, hold, I hold it up like this, like a rock. Oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch. You don't get son of a bitch. You fight a boss, you. But I think that's what he was trying to say, is that if we put on a good TV show each week, People will show up. And I, you know what? I'm going to agree with them. Now, before I give my opinion, man, you had your hand up. You want to add something? I just want to ask Marcus a question based on what he just said. If you're a network, TV network executive, how much time do you give for that? Because, like, if you see normal TV shows, they don't give any time. Like, if, if the numbers ain't performing, you cancel. How much time yeah. are you giving them to produce numbers of like let's just go let's just throw it out there a repeat of the big bang theory because aew yeah, ain't even uh, reaching those numbers uh you guys you guys have worked with me and as many stated you guys are my brothers eric by blood many by internet <laughs> but, <laughs> i don't know how that tracks i don't know how else to say it but uh you know how i could get when i talk when i look at quality Damn whatever's going on with ETE. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, I, know, uh, first no, of all, no, I know what was in your head. Hold on. I know what was in your head, and I was going to get there. I'm not talking no, about numbers. I'm talking no. about, we're talking about numbers. It is it's the lowest rated show on the channel. You take shots at ETE. It's no, not but funny it's the low, it's it. not a shot. It's the truth. It is the lowest viewed thing on the channel. It is. It's niche. And I thank Whatever. you for that. It is. But 
I was Wow. You know, that's, rude, you know? that's, yeah. rude. that's rude. That's rude. That's rude. I'm glad you're taking that fun of ETE. That's rude than when we make fun of ET, Eric. <laughs> so, with that being said, oh, I am very impulsive. I'm someone that would have probably canceled Rampage and Collision as soon as see a bunk was gone somewhere around that because I don't see a point and it feel like it's hurting the quality. With Dynamite, I feel like Dynamite does a really good job at being close to number one in the ratings on cable each week if not number one. They always have competition, whether it's sports, or hockey, baseball, basketball, whatever. And, you know, they overcome some ob- obstacles. Um, would I be concerned a little bit about the quality? I would like to oversee stuff, but I would not cancel Dynamite uh, unless it really it really falls off the cliff. Like, where they're at right now, I'm fine with it. They can consistently do this, but I'm not going to, unless it falls into collision status. Or uh, Rampage stats, I'm, I'll be okay with Dynamite still being up. Because they if have I'm network fans exact. where they don't actually have any type of competition and they produce the exact same numbers. Would like I would be concerned in that state. When you don't have any competition, yeah. you should be able to pull in more than a million. And they don't. Yeah. They they struggle with they 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 hit a kind of ceiling between seven seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand. No, no, yeah, but I know I'm the host, but, but can hold I on before we go yeah. into this situation. Ah, come on, I got one. I don't want to lose the start. It's real quick. Okay, please, please. It's not even an argument, Eric. <laughs> I'm not, not an argument, argument it's, Eric. It's just a conversation. But yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize we were having such a serious conversation on this show. Man, he's been drinking. Going, we have to be serious. I'm planning on going off the wall at some point on this show, like Michael Jackson at some point randomly. But um, maybe like Goldberg. They are they are consistently number one I'm on the Goldberg. night. Most people. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Anyway, uh, they are consistently like number one or two on the night. This TV ratings are mm. down everywhere in all aspects of television. It's not like Raw's doing gangbusters. They're doing about the same thing they've been doing for the past what, like five years, or not five years? They're doing worse than what they did five years. But you know, for the past year or yeah, so, no about questioning around, them because like, they get they million. get over a million. No one's questioning them. Mark, yeah, so no one's questioning. It's because they is a B brand. This is, this is like the mm. UFFL doing good ratings. They know they're not number one, but now, they're doing now, they're doing a solid job. Now, now what I want to say is about the it's a couple of it's a it's a lot of caveats in this situation. What Brian Danielson has said in this situation, and I do agree that good wrestling can attract uh, a, a a strong wrestling fan base. But the one thing we know about the wrestling fan base, most wrestling fans aren't loyal. And the thing about it, eventually they will run out of marquee matchups where. People will just start having repeat matches. And and what do you do in that situation? That's where I think that the downfall of them not really developing many storylines and, and stuff to give us motivation of what's going on could be something that bites them in the ass going down the line. I mean, quite frankly, the fact that the storyline that they have going on, probably in the main event this week on Dynamite, was Edge against Christian about in Toronto is stuff that even take place really in their company. You know what I mean? It was just like... You know, I saw things this week in Dynamite where you can see that they're trying to make a more cohesive and more production feel things. Like even with Mercedes Monet having her own package that she made, that package was not good. It didn't really tell me who she was, but it was a package to say the least. I think the thing about it, though, is, is that when you That's have somebody said. like Tony Khan, who has an endless supply of money, he doesn't really have any pressure for himself to improve because he's not relying on the networks to keep him afloat like when dixie had tna you know she was bleeding money was bleeding dry and it's like well at a point you have to either sell the company or figure out what you're going to do in this situation dixie was in a different scenario but in which, do you, you know she uh she's a billion she's a billion dollar heiress similar to tony khan but her daddy was like uh-uh this is bleeding money i don't know if tony's dad chad who is now worth 11 billion dollars by himself <laughs> just didn't care. He just went up to eleven billion. I don't think they honestly care at this point. Like, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think around. money's an object though. But the thing is, I think that Eric, it's the yes. Um, with your point you just made, do you think when Eric, when Tony Khan flashes the checkbook and just signs all these people, do you think there's a plan, or does he? Do you think? Do you think he's just got these people and then doesn't it? Because it it seems like. Mercedes Monet, there doesn't seem to be a plan as of yet. I feel like they're just kind of just working working their way through it. But like when 
when WWE, when you hear the reports, I don't know how true they are, but when you hear the reports of WWE's approach to these people, it's that it sounds like they have a plan of what they could do with them when they come in. But like, so like when you have, uh, when you have, will Osprey come in and you just throw me a da- Brian Danielson match against Will Osprey? If feels forced there's nothing behind it and i find it difficult to for me as a fan to go i'm all in for this but like i know that i know it'll be a five-star match but like if they had a coherent story that had me invested i feel like it'd be even higher like if if you're grading on a milk show it could be like six or seven so i'm going to answer both of your questions first and foremost i do not think i think the only plan that tony has is that i don't want wwe to get this person i think that's his main plan Mm. i don't want them to get okada i don't want them to get mercedes and i think a prime example of that is his only plan is that when he signed jay white jay white was signed and they had absolutely no idea what to do with jay white once he was signed like jay white has been like uh like just even not even a c player in the game of AEW. Now, going on to the next portion of that, I oh, think it would have been a lot no! better <laughs> if Tony, instead of giving us Osprey versus Brian Danielson right away, maybe if he would have ran the gauntlet a little bit and maybe fought a uh, Cesaro or or Moxley or something before he got to Brian Danielson, let it he build could. up a little bit before we just get this marquee match. Because like now, it's like there's absolutely no foreplay. You just went straight they, to you just went straight to hey, having hey, 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 massive baby, sex. Not to uh cut you off in the middle of your hardcore you sex talk right now. <laughs> not to cut you off in the middle of your hardcore sex. Don't worry, uh, I have a notebook. Have to, I write notes of my points. They have, they have. You know, I can see her doing that. <laughs> I was like, this is how you prevent from cutting people off. You write down your thought because that's my main fear. I don't want to remember. I don't want to forget it. I don't want to forget what I want to say. Uh, the main thing about you know. They can still do your foreplay storyline. He'll fight Cesaro and whatnot. <laughs> I think the uh, the contrast to when he, Coney brings someone in, as opposed to they to be bringing in, like you brought up, they they want to have a plan. Some similar to the way they have Braun Breaker and the way he was in the minors or basically NXT for forever. They're like, we just don't have a reason to call him up at this current moment and what to do with him. They seemingly called him up now. They kind of still doesn't seem like they have a plan, but at least it's teaser. But I like to think take Jay Cargill in a, a simple direction. They signed her right away because she looked like a star. They didn't know what to do with her. They didn't know what to do with her. And they said, well, hold on, Paul. Gonna... Paul, let's see where she's at. Okay, pause. Where can we fit her in within the next seven months? Yeah, it seems the... like. But and they did. That... They found... But they're going to find a spot, I believe, next week. But the thing about that, Marcus, let me tell you what WWE has done different. I like that you brought up those two names because SmackDown really proved this point. Like, Will Ospreay was brought in, and AEW relies a lot on their audience knowing who these people are, which is their their prerogative. However, I really think you would appreciate with some type of introduction. WWE takes an opposite direction. They know they own the NXT product, but they figure that hell, no one knows who Braun Breaker is. So let's give a package highlighting what makes Braun Breaker so special. And I really enjoyed that package that he got with his 40 yard dance. Like, I was like, shit, he seems magical. And then they did the same thing with Jade Cargill. And I was like, damn, I know who Jade is. I know she looks impressive, but this package even makes her look even more impressive. Will Osprey cuts a great promo, but what about him? makes him so special to make me care about this match between him and Brian Danielson. Mandy, can you answer that question? I wouldn't. <laughs> That's I'm okay, not, Mandy. Uh, Marcus, Mandy, you Mandy, Mandy. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I I'm think sorry, that... People. I'm sorry, I'm You know what? It was, uh, it was a time when I would say... And you know what, Eric, I agree with you. The way I like my professional wrestling is if, you know, you spoon fed me stuff that even if I know, I know, like you, you make sure I know. And I and I appreciate what this person coming in. I go, oh yeah. So like when they brought back Andrade, I personally don't believe other than having a great match with Andrade, there ain't no money there. It might not be. He's but a big card at best. On Raw, they did have a video package for someone that has already wrestled and came through their system. To reintroduce you to Andrade. 
seeing yeah. almost. And I do like that. I do like that. And I like that in our TV shows. You don't just bring in a random character from a different show. You don't put Jack Bauer on uh, Lost and assume I know the history of Jack Bauer. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh, he well, a bad motherfucker. If he's someone, if he's shouting at someone, you know that Jack Bauer's here. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if I'm walking and I'm going to uh, go through another show, I'm going, this is like a bunch of TV. If I'm talking about The Walking Dead, and I put a character from Fear the Walking Dead or the the Last Survivors or the uh, whatever the the, the uh, what's the biker guy name? Uh, he had his own show. They do incorporate random characters from here and there, but they do also get introductions, similar to Marvel movies as well. Like I'm assuming when you watch Deadpool and Wolverine, they're gonna give you a brief history of who would have fuck Wolverine is, even though everybody and their mama. No, Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. All right, let me ask a question. The thing that was really trending this week in, in, in people around our age was X-Men 97, Marcus. I have not watched it yet, but did X-Men 97, did it give a little recap of what took place before it did it just jump straight in to the show? Eric, I'm, it's what? X-Men 97, Eric, previously. It seems so. Well, you see, <laughs> I can't be saying, hey, we back. That back. little bit, that little bit right there is all you need. Like, for example, when they introduced Okada, Okada was introduced. Then this week on Dynamite, he pulls up in a Ferrari. He's not even kicking it with the young bucks. I'm like, why? I thought he was part of Leech, and they all rolled up together. I'm confused. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's more of a nitpick, but I, I, I don't. Mine is making. <laughs> what up, man? Pull up in a Ferrari. Yeah. I, I'm throwing up in yeah, a Ferrari. Yeah, he broke up for <laughs> I just give him his Ferrari Ferrari. Ain't taking his money. So let me go to some of the it comments. It was a rental. Uh, Apparently, Jay he was Bush. he was taking Shohei Atani's money as for his money as well. He says, "Good afternoon, evening. May Hulk Hogan have the worst bracket going right now, and to continue bringing up random athletes, this one is for you, Eric Levon Kirkland. Thank you, Levon Kirkland. Ooh. Wow, Smoking uh, Steeler, right? Yes, he was. <laughs> El Luchador says, finally, the Luch is back in the lumberjack." Manny pointed out that you were here on Tuesday, but then he says El Luchador was not the Luch. And then he adds, Okada won a single title on his first official singles match as part of the AEW roster. And he didn't even know he was going to get Pyro. That's the worst part about it. He didn't know the Pyro was coming. (laughs) Might have been the highlight for me of Dynamite. Can I... uh... Okay. I'm gonna, before, well, I want to talk about maybe we can put this in a tight little bow or whatever. Oh, all these signings maybe they have box? Osprey, Okada, Mercedes. Yeah, maybe a little box that I probably just repurposed from another gift. Uh, Okada, Mercedes, and Osprey are the big signings from AEW. This is their, you know, their ultimate big signings. And, you know, the numbers aren't really, you know, gangbusters. They're doing the same thing they were doing before those people show up. And I would like to say, and this may, be, this may be a hot take, that I don't blame any of these three wrestlers for not increasing the ratings and they're not a draw. I think that the AEW product itself has hindered things from drawing because Tony's ability to make things feel special and to change things up. Like, they've had, you know, solid shows. I'm saying the last two shows of Dynamite have been some solid, pretty good shows. But right now, we're at a negative since for the past few months of the devil storyline and all that, the continental tournament didn't really hit as hard as I think they thought it would. And I think they need to rebuild their credibility and, you know, they might be able to do that. If they consistently put on good shows like Brian Daniels said, said, if they continue to pull up the quality, but I think that's why the ratings are having changed. It's that, Oh, it's dynamite. I know what to expect from that show. People are going to go back and forth in the ring. <laughs> People are going to kick out of moves. Crazy shit's going to happen. And then the match ends in a roll up. And well, that's kind of what's been going you know on what? the past few months. And people have been done with it. Do you know what I feel the problem recently in the last two weeks? Well, the last, well whenever they decided to change their set, <laughs> it's going to be like black. It does baby. feel I too hate much Mercedes. like WWE. It feels like too much mm. WWE. And the Mercedes is coming there, not in an AEW kind of way. When she talked, it feels just like Sasha Banks in mm. WWE. Well, the, it doesn't man, feel like Mercedes Monet. Man, it doesn't feel like a Mercedes Monet that was kind of sprouting about in um, New Japan or anything. It feels yeah, when that was a good he was easy. talking to that crowd for the last two weeks. It does feel like but, but man, Sasha Banks is in AEW. Let's, it doesn't feel honest, like anything's though. changed. Mercedes Monet is you want to call her Sasha? The one thing I can tell you about Mercedes, Sasha, whatever you want to call, her, she was never strong on the mic. I don't understand why they gave her the no. Microphone. Hey. Hey. 
to build on your point, she was never strong as a face. That's what she yeah. is right now. When, when and, she and was like, you know, it kind of worked, but I, for me, and it's but, just me alone, I hate the Boston accent. I'm sorry, but, people. But let me just say, let me, <laughs> let me just say this right now, and I'll tell you this right now. Her talking less is more prevalent than anything else. And then their whole segment that they did when Willow and Chris Statletter came in, and next thing you know, Willow is contemplating hitting her with a chair. And I'm just like, why is Willow the one teasing a heel turn? It makes absolutely no sense to me. On top of that, I was just like, Willow might be the happiest person in the game, and I prefer for her to be a face than Mercedes Monet. And the CEO chant gets on my nerves. Maybe yeah, it that's what it's supposed did. to do. <laughs> I, I was like, if I can't hear this anymore. And well, and I think El, El Lucha Dork makes a very good point. He says he doesn't need great numbers. I just need AEW to stay around. I understand they will probably never be number one wrestling company in the world, but they're number one for me. And I think AEW, needs to have, they need to be there because it I, made yeah. WWE step up the game. And I understand that I may not be the ideal target for the AEW product because I see people clamor about oh this is an amazing show this is a great show this is a this is some stuff like that but for me personally it's it's a lot of stuff that is missing from that product that could be improved this well, yeah, is a lot the quote on manny uh apparently I, I learned this i forgot where but uh mercedes hired uh one of the wwe former writers who used to write for in wwe as well mm. to write her promos and you can kind of tell you can yeah. kind of tell when she's uh, out there. It doesn't come off like an AEW promo, like you said. Like when Will Ospreay was going off. Um, Rough. Last that was week. it. That, that yeah, was, he was going off. And he's like, we're going to figure out who the best wrestler in the world. And then this week, he's cut the same thing. You feel it. You feel it. And it feels like it's from him. Like, that's what AEW promos feel like. And that, good or bad, like, you know, Cody went off the rail on his when he was in AEW where he had all that free will. But Osprey is all of it still felt authentic when John Moxley cuts a promo. It feels like that's a John Moxley promo. Yeah. Mercedes is cutting a Sasha Banks promo when we need to hear a Mercedes Monet from the heart promo that doesn't sound scripted because she's not a good actress. I've seen the Mandalorian. You are not good. So, so Marcus, Marcus, let me ask this question. This is also to El Luchador or the Luch as he wants to be called. The one thing about AEW that set itself away apart from WWE, it wasn't as scripted. Now we're getting a little bit more scripted. I don't want that scriptivity. And I know that might not be a word because we Thank already you. got scripts in uh, NXT. But I think I like that. You authentic, say scripted. I, 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 they have, I like that authentic feel. I want authenticity when you cut a promo. That's what makes me get behind Will Ospreay. I believe the shit that was coming out of his mouth. He's ready to have a banger of a match. And that's what everything Mercedes was saying. I was like, man, she has changed the dynamic because we had more women's segments on this episode of Dynamite than we've had in the past six months combined together. I just don't know if it's the right pieces in this puzzle, in my opinion. Well, uh, on, the, on the Thursday show, I equated her to Happy Phil when he first came to AEW. It feels a lot like Phil. He is 100% right with Happy Phil. So, yeah, that's what it feels like, and it's just not... And CM Punk, you know, you may say what you want about him. Even when he's scripted or is Happy Phil... He still sounded authentic, and I don't think Mercedes is capable of doing what Phil was able to do. All right, so, Phil was terrible and happy, but so, he was so still, you can still listen to him and be like, oh, there's something here. There's one more new story I want to talk about. I guess the reports came out that these two guys right here, the Motor City Machine Guns, their contract with TNA or Impact Wrestling may be expiring at the oh, end of this, this month. This and, two story. <laughs> and the question is, uh, <laughs> will they stay with uh, Impact? Or could you see a place where they maybe jump to New Japan, to AEW, or even to WWE? I know, Marcus, my boy, Alex Shelley, had his one brief stint in NXT, and I was happy to see him there. Marcus, could you see Alex Shelley and Chris Saban maybe try to come to WWE and maybe try and revive the dead tag division? Tag division wrestling is dead, and, and, and WWE is the one that killed it, and they would keep it that way, and they will act like it's important, but it's not. It is not. It is not a serious, serious thing. Uh, with that being said, the only way I see the Motor City, like, one, I'm going to get this all the way. I don't want to see them in AEW. I don't think that adds anything to their tag division. They are still talented people, but I just don't think that's worth the money. If I'm spending all this money, I think I need to just stop bringing people in. I think that's where I'm at. 
Just don't bring anybody. In. I'm not. We don't need to add to Tony's collection of wrestlers. It looks like I'm looking at a baseball collection of somebody's. Like, you want to see my baseball cards? <laughs> I got the Motor City Machine Gun. Let me oh, dust. The, let, but, let me dust them off real quick. Let, let me dust off this Akata rookie card for you. Did you can't believe I got that? Like, that's what it feels like when I'm getting AEW vibes. Just stop signing people. If they were to go to WWE, I could only see them go to NXT. I don't see them on the main roster. I see the uh, Motor City Machine Guns. I mean, NXT is um, on, um, they're getting their major TV deal with the CW next year. And you know what? This would be a good, solid name to have on there for people from the hardcore fan base would come to support NXT and be like, oh, I want to see what the guns are doing. With that being said, I think they need to stay their ass in Impact if they want to continue and, you know, work random other places with New Japan and stuff here and there. I just don't see the value in it anymore. I like them, but, you know. Man, what about you? You have any comment on this one? I think I think the story was that um, ever since Scott Demore left, I believe whoever's in charge of TNA right now had offered them an appearance deal. So Ooh. they could still be a part <laughs> of TNA, but I don't know. I don't because you those two. Fuck you. Yeah, those two would. If you were to pay them an appearance deal, I feel like the appearance fee would be quite high for those two. Yeah. yeah. Given their history with the company, so I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't tie them down to an actual contract. But if they were, like Marcus already said, if they were to go to WWE, I would prefer them to be in, in NXT. I don't. I don't see them as main roster WWE guys. Yeah, and, and really I don't think that's. Tactic. I don't think that's a bad situation for them. But like, yeah. it's the same situation as Naomi. Naomi isn't a main event. WWE girl, she is a mid roster have... girl, but like outside, outside of WWE, she's a main event. We're we're gonna yeah. talk about Naomi like, when we get to SmackDown. But the thing can, about can, the Motor City oh, Machine ahead. Guns, like the what gives more um credence to them leaving Impact is the fact that apparently they have filed for the trademarks with for the Motor City Machine Guns and stuff like that. Where it seems like they're gonna make their run. A lot of people think that they may end back up in New Japan Pro Wrestling because they had a very good stint with them. I can see that happening. I mean, if, if you're going to pay the fee, as Marcus said, I don't see them really going to WWE main roster, maybe NXT, if anything. That's probably the best destination for them. But as Marcus also said, AEW probably needs to stay away from them because it would just be another collectible that's collecting dust. And since we're talking about things collecting yeah. dust, let's talk can about I give the you biggest a, a dust. Before no, you go into your Dusty. I have a good ah. story. Talk about some collecting dust. Let's talk about old dusty ass Goldberg who decided to be extremely disrespectful <sighs> and uh oh, talk Goldberg. about his treatment yeah. in WWE and how they disrespected him because they planted some Japanese girl, maybe named Asuka, to break his record right when he was signing. Man, fuck out of here. That's we, all I I'm got. gonna disrespect Goldberg and go back to the Motor City Machine Guns. So I think it's Marcus. a bigger deal than wrestling. <laughs> 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 Wrap it back up because let me uh, tell you, I do like digging through my archives and finding pictures and not posting them up here. That's kind of cool. Oh, uh, well, you took that photo, it, yeah. That's my photo. photo, yeah. That's from Ring of Honor. If uh, the Motor City Machine Guys were to go to WWE, they'd be DIY. If hey, they go into hey, AEW, DIY versus will Motor City Machine Guys would be a good ass match. Uh, hold on, it would be, it would be like most DIY matches, it'd be a good match, but. Know what I'm going to hear at the same time? Crickets. Or Manny smacking on fries at the same time as the match is going oh, on. Marcus. I will not. Honestly, I don't up, think people. anybody. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody would give a fuck. And then if they were to go into AEW, I got a worse scenario. They become the Hardy Boys. But Marcus, I think the thing about WWE. <laughs> and you saw though, how that ended up. But Marcus, Ooh. I think the thing about that, in my opinion, though, if Motor City Machine Guns did show up, the WWE would try to do everything in their power to try and like make people know who they were. I mean, that's the one thing I would give them credit for. They would try their best to do that. Would it work? Yeah. I don't know. But you just never know what's going to happen when it comes to, right. you know, fans and stuff. And now I'm about to touch on the Goldberg scenario, Eric. 
Go ahead, fuck touch that, that motherfucker brother. and all the motherfucking shit he bringing up, and no one gives a fuck about you, and no one ever has. You ended Bret Hart career. I'm saying that for Bret, you bald piece of shit who <laughs> can only do two moves, only do two moves. Oscar has more talent in her little fucking dance than you have in your whole fucking career in a wrestling ring. So back the fuck up before you get smacked the fuck up by Asuka, who I think can actually probably whoop your fat ass and your son. That's it. How Manny. fragile is this man's ego to start talking about this now? Like, sure, <laughs> bring it up when the when the when the thing happened. Sure, bring it up. The fact that the fact that he is bringing this up now, when he got a run, he, he his final run in WWE. He shouldn't even deserve that run. He got a what? A universal title and then got a run at Roman. He needs to fuck right off. He brings up this pain, whole man. Uh, Triple H not liking him and everything. But it's nonsense. Him, I remember when he, he came. Do you remember his first run with WWE? He had long yeah. matches with Triple H and Chris Jericho to prove how bad of a wrestler this man was. He yeah. ain't a wrestler. Get out of here. Sick and tired of you, I mean, Goldberg. Get the fuck out of it. I mean, this is an old example of somebody still trying to remain relevant when they know that their uh history, their 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 path in history is gonna go down as a mediocre wrestler. Like he was a, a ripoff of Steve Austin. That's all he was. Nothing <laughs> See, more, I, nothing I, less. Oh, He's just a bald white man. And yeah. I feel like there's been a million bald white men. But I'm not saying he's a rip off. I, I never went to the route saying he's a Steve Austin rip off. I've always said they were, they, they look similar, but it was not a real rip off. It was completely different. Goldberg was a happening back then, similar to the way the Ultimate Warrior was a happening when he ran rough shot through the business, in which you knew what you were getting. High energy. Oh, this is intensity. This is this is nice. This is he looks like a star. But once you linger around, you realize there's no depth here. It's like there's no there's no there's no creativity there's no uh artistic uh uh value to him at all there's the, like of all the wrestlers in history to be a world champion I feel like David Arquette had more charisma and wrestling ability than Goldberg. He, David well said, Arquette brother. now has more ability than this guy. <laughs> yes, and you know just to uh uh to oh, double down. As El Luchador said, Gold Turd is a fucking mark for himself. He's Ultimate Warrior 2.0. Then, Marcus, he applauded you and say, preach, brother. Preach. That's praise. And That's praise. You know what? He says he buried the feet. Let me tell you something. I'm excited for the uh, the Bray Wyatt documentary on Peacock. I might be I something ain't. I'll watch. I th- I hey man, <laughs> Bo, Bo look good. You can hear the hate. Damn, man. Hate. Damn, man. <laughs> I ain't know you, man. I don't want your hand that shit. I, I understand what is happening. That yes, with the death of of him, what happens is that it makes it seem like that you know Bray is going to be put up. He's going to be like Aaliyah. He's going to be uplifted more than what he should be, and and that's just not good. And you know that's just not the way. <laughs> Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Fuck you. Don't lose your thought. Fuck you. Don't lose your thought. <laughs> Don't lose your thought. Stay focused. Ready? He's he's holding you. That's the crowd, man. Fuck he's you. proud of you. Five Fuck points you. in, brother. What? 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 Yourself, you what? can't focus with Magnus in the corner. I don't know who that man, man is. Oh. You did it on purpose. That's a beautiful. <laughs> that might be the best photo ever taken of that man. I mean, but 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 you know because. I didn't realize I could make it bigger than that. I might have to go redo it so many can always look at this man hold up this title like this. Anyway. I took bad, I took bad pictures of Chris Masters in his prime. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, if you tell somebody that was Chris Masters in their prime, they might believe I love you, Eric. Uh, oh, fuck you. <laughs> I, no, Betty. Betty, first of all, you, know what he was doing. Made, you made the mistake and you told me you had five pints. And the fact that I saw you zoom in to look at it and then you, once you realize who it was, I saw the anger in your face, and I said, "My mission has been accomplished." You know. What is the? Uh, Marcus, hold on, I, need I, I need to ask you this question. I need to ask you this what question, you, Marcus. Is... Based on the Thursday show, when I said what I said about Okada winning the title, and then Pac, then Pac, uh, went, uh, I don't know what he did. Walked out. Walked side to side on the yeah. uh, ramp. And I called him a fucking idiot. 
You <laughs> yeah. you said you felt the hatred, but in this moment, did you feel the hatred of me looking at Nick Aldis, or did you feel more my hatred towards Pac in this moment in time? I'm honestly <laughs> gonna say towards Pac. Yeah, when, you say the fucking, when you say the fucking idiot, that came from just someone just I had enough. That just I had enough. <laughs> like that was like that was like you having a sister and her boyfriend uh, uh, ran down on her again, and you're like, I don't care. I fucking had enough of this guy. You keep running back into that. It's your business, but he's never coming to my fucking Thanksgiving again or whatever the hell it is. That's where you were at with Pat. I'm so you're sick of him and his comeback into your life. You were done with it. He's a fucking idiot. Made, made, made him a little bit bigger so he could look at Manny but a little bit longer. I'm going to tell you this. On a scale to how, how much I felt it, Manny, when you said, uh, fuck you for Nick Aldis or whatever, you know, I felt it, but I didn't feel like I had to put on my dark side cloak and join in with the <laughs> fuck you pack. I felt like I was full Palpatine. Yes, yes. So, Let so the run to you. Manny, I, I'll give you an opportunity. You can remove this picture of Nick Aldis if you could tell me what championship he's holding up and what championship he won. I don't fucking know. Who is that? NWA title? It's not the NWA title, Manny. Unfortunately, it's not. Marcus, you can help your co-host, Marcus, if you could tell me what title that he won in this situation. Oh, he's phoning a friend. This is the... uh, I'm going to say... It is the TNA championship, but I don't want to say it is TNA or Impact because I don't remember if it's which one is which right now. Betty, you have a wonderful co-host right here because he is saving you from this stuff. He had to. <laughs> you, may <laughs> not, you may not remember exactly what title it, he won, and I'm being very generous when I give you this victory because it is a TN, T, TNA title. It is. However, the title is not a singles title, but a tag title. When he oh. won this title with this man right here, the current AEW world champion, Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe right this here. This made him in mafia business. Right here. There it is. That was the this moment. This made him in mafia shit. What the Earl fuck Hebner. is he got a damn right at this shit? What's Earl Hebner trying yeah, to he, do? Yeah, he, he, he did that in house shows, Manny, and uh, he sold that shirt. He sells he was that about shirt. to screw Brent, and when the crowd would boo him for it, and then he'll just take it off and so hey, damn right I did. Oh, does look like he is a young Zack Ryder, not a not Matt Cardona. The the photo of him holding the title up in in the darkness, he looks like a young Zack Ryder. Yeah, he could be. He does. You know, also you got know a picture of like it this. He could also be Austin Theory. Yeah, it could be a lot. <laughs> I mean, really, oh, oh, you had to look, you had to hate Magnus and know that was Magnus. That's just that's yeah. the thing about Honestly, it. Honestly, yeah, you can just say this is the uh the prototypical data the wrestling look. Like that could have been a generic photo of anybody you say, yeah, I wrestle. No, Eric <laughs> made me do a double take on it. Eric made me do a double take on who the fuck that was. Uh El Luchador, Manny doesn't have to worry about this because Nick God has had that fluke arm injury that he tore his tricep and nobody knows what he was doing. It was me. So, he saw me in NXT parking log. I took him out. <laughs> All right, so speaking of that, let's talk about SmackDown. SmackDown takes place. Marcus, I'll give you the thing. Do you want to go from the show beginning, or do you want to talk about the showdown between Roman and Cody first? It's your show, man. Do whatever you want. Because I, 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 my, my, my favorite thing on the show isn't even at the beginning or the end. It's somewhere in the middle. It's in the middle. It's my favorite thing on the show, Bianca Belair's. Bianca Belair just going through the emotions on this show because I feel like no, I no, oh, no, no, I, I felt that. Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. Last week on the show, we were talking about Bianca Belair was just doing nothing. She was standing on business as being a black woman. That's all she was doing by not making the save last week. And this Maddie. week, this is also the comforting of a black woman going like, "I told you not to get in there, baby. You, you just need to listen to me because she's yelling at her, but also taking <laughs> care of her." Shante uh, Shante was very happy about this segment. She said, "I quote." Man, Bianca ran down the ring like a black woman who knew her friend was in trouble. She had so much passion and so much vigor, and she got into that ring and was just about kicking ass. True. Yeah. Eventually, she Can got her ass out? kicked. Can I just point out, Dakota Kai ran out to try and stop Bianca Belair, and she got oh, thrown no into the steel steps. Dakota Kai, <laughs> you have a fucked up knee. Why are you running yourself directly into those steps knee first, you idiot? Yeah, because, Manny, this, Manny, because this was the whole process. They had to make uh -huh. us forget about Dakota Kai so she could come back and give them the uh, 
<laughs> the jump a, a head start again when Eric, Bianca was kicking ass. It was impossible for me to forget Dakota Kai because how did she walk into the arena, Eric? She thought she was Bret Hart. She came in completely dressed as Bret Hart. <laughs> She no, had the curly hair and the glasses. She had a Bret Hart t-shirt and a leather jacket. Six. And I believe some some sickle fan out there, maybe, I don't know if that's the right word, but some pervert is going, I'm going to jerk off to Bret Hart tonight. So, I'm glad we're in this segment right now because I believe this was the best moment of SmackDown because it's, it's, the, it, it my was, new, it was, it was. it's my new beat down on site. EO, <laughs> EO. Beat down on site in the middle of her own fucking entrance. I don't know what yeah, Bailey was no doing, like but How this cool bitch said, you know, How cool is she, was like, she did that. She was like, all my, other crew, all my other crew was out there dancing, but I saw Bailey walk by. Let me go whoop her ass. And she whooped her ass. And it's came a back good out. plan. Yeah, it's a good plan of I'm gonna whoop her ass. And she's not going to see it coming because she's expecting me to go to the ring. And I thought that was the best plan I've seen a heel do in a long time. It's better than Roman snapping the fingers. We all so, knew what was happening, Roman. We knew. And then Did on you top watch of Pat that. Did McAfee thing, though? Did you watch Pat McAfee? Yeah, but we, yeah we're gonna, we're, I'll, I'll tell Eric we're going to touch gonna on that when we do the closing brother. segment. I'm not going to kill my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. My favorite thing about this segment, and I will see if you guys catch on to this. Did it look similar to you? The Bianca save? It looked similar to me. It looked like and the Mercedes Monet save from Dynamite the week before. Because it was the exact same thing. The Kota Kai ran out. Well, Bianca lays you out. It wasn't a Mercedes Monet lay you out. Bianca looked like she had knocked the fuck out of you. And that's yeah. when she did the EO. I mean, uh, Dakota. And it looked exactly like the same save until she got Dakota Kai took her leg out. I, I'm gonna say the thing I like the most about this match is that I'm gonna tell you this right now, and I'm speaking from the heart. EO needed match. this. EO needed this. This was actually a good showing for EO. I thought Naomi gave a good showing too. And I don't care if anybody's crying, Naomi had to lose this match, but I thought it was for the bigger purpose of having Bianca have purpose. Then the whole Tiffany Stratton thing in the back when they're watching. I love this segment. This segment gave me everything that I needed. The, from the from the backstage beat down to Bailey to the the run in with Bianca, I thought this was probably one of the better things that took place on SmackDown, and that's yeah, my opinion. The, the Black I Women love, United. I love Tiffany Stratton's involvement in this because it was yeah, just so yeah. funny. Which is like, it was like, I'm probably gonna throw up in the toilet maybe in like f- three to six hours, but I'm not gonna have anyone holding me like Bianca Belair holding me, holding me up like. Oh, you're gonna be okay, baby. And then you're gonna be okay. Of- <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, the funny thing about that segment is, and I think you guys may have turned me around on this. That this may be my favorite portion of the show is when Bianca's like, "Can we get a towel? A towel? Yeah. Can we get a towel?" And I was like, "How hard was it for them to get a towel for her <laughs> eyes? Well, they have made it all the way to the back, and no one actually thought to get a towel to wipe this well, shit out of her the, eyes." The greatest thing about it is that remember, these are supposed to be the medical professions at WWE, and no one thought, "Let's get a towel to help poor Naomi out." And it's not like this is the first time. That uh, Oscar spray miss in somebody out, unless no. she keep changing the recipe. Unless she, does, she keep she changing the recipe, she, she but, does uh, every now and then. But you know, like this was a funny moment for me also. But then, like another highlight for me was just the pettiness of Dominic Mysterio still be trying to yeah. shit on his daddy's parade. Like Ray <laughs> messed up; he could have had a WrestleMania moment, but he did not. Yeah, before we go into the uh, the Latino division, I still want to say the Black Women's division, yeah. where the Black Women will unite next week, right? Martin, it has to happen because as soon as this segment up. ended, they gave us the video package on Jade. Jade's going to be the third piece to keep them out. And it's going to be black women versus Japanese women, and I cannot wait. Actually, it might. Yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah, Jade. Uh, Mark, you know what? That is a match. That makes sense. Hmm. Jade signed with SmackDown. She's going to be on there. Um, blah, blah, blah happens with her signing. But, but and I don't think it's going to be Japanese. They make the safe. Think- I think Tiffy's going to uh, replace Dakota. I don't think Dakota gets a uh, WrestleMania uh, moment. <laughs> I think it's... Think I, I think they're going to outsource? They're going to yeah, outsource? Think it, I think it'll be Tiffy and the Kabuki Ooh. Warriors against Bianca, Naomi, and Jay. I, I think Ooh. that that make more sense to me because Dakota... I don't need Dakota on the ring. She's just going to get hurt again. And my last question about this, Eric. Jay, Naomi, and Bianca, they may team up for this one. To take this to protect the girl Bailey or not beyond ba- Bianca's girl Bailey, but protect Bailey. Would you want to keep them together as a Mark, team? Mark, that's Mark. This is the definition of team bad right here. I mean, 
this this is this is that's a pretty Bianca Jade and Naomi. Naomi the happy one. We know that much. Yeah. We've seen the trial ones with Jade and her baddies, but this is an upgrade, I think. I think it's yeah. an upgrade for Red Velvet and uh Kara Hogan, and I think there was another one. Layla uh, Layla, Layla Gray. Layla, Layla, Layla Gray. Gray. Who 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 yeah. Who who is funny if you follow Jade on Instagram is thirsty in the comments. Just keep complimenting Jade. Like, girl, can you please call somebody and let me get a job with you? Please let me get a job with you. Just please. Is she, is she actually please. Say that? No, no. It's just that it's like the compliments, oh. but you're like, girl, you look you look great and stuff. You know, you can tell when somebody like trying to find employment. Does she work for AW still? We don't know. She's by AW. <laughs> yeah, don't I don't know. She, she, Mark, they do it anyway. They use one, they use two members in a week. They use two women a week. We don't Mark, know. She, she's one of those Sky Blue and Julia Hart. <laughs> she's one of those. And now they have incorporated uh, Willow Nightingale into this. That we're saying. You know, so I really like, in her own universe. I really like Santos against Rey Mysterio. I didn't expect Dominic to show up. I did not expect this. This came out of the blue. Manny, did you did you see Dominic involving himself in this situation? No, but I feel like he needs to keep it relevant. I feel like Dominic needs to retire Rey Mysterio, and it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, the the rumor is it's either a uh, career versus hair match at Mania of some kind. Ooh. Damn, it's too late we, in the we, game for that. Because Dominic's hair is looking pretty good. good. We we don't have a gimmick match yet on the on the card, and but you but, know what? You no, have... that's not the match we're getting though. I don't think that's but, the match we're getting. Because you know what? We need to have it again because we got brother versus brother. We need to have father versus son part two. No, no I want, Luch- I I want like Lucha Mania. Mania. We got to go full Lucha Mania. I mean, we got to do Triple Mania at WrestleMania, everybody. I mean, but we got stuff this, Team Lucas, Lu- do you involve? Do you involve where is your boss? Yes. I pitched this to Eric, and I was like, this is what's going down, and I think this is what's happening. Uh, the, the Mexican Tin Man is going to get involved, <laughs> and he's going <laughs> to... The Mexican team man is going to get involved and it's going to be Team Rey Mysterio at, at Triple Mania at WrestleMania <laughs> against Team Legardo Del Fantasma featuring Dominic Mysterio. Absolutely, I think. And I would love for that. You know, I know we want our meat versus meat man match, but I think Lucha Mania will be a hell of a match. Hey, but you, you get all it, those fools and, in and there. And with Triple H being in charge, there's a better chance of Lucha Mania happening than anything because he kind of respects everything. Now, SmackDown was not all roses. I mean, outside of the segment that we have some bad, the new bracket came. Oh, that burger looked good. Uh, we got the new bracket, and this bracket was worse than last week, Marcus. I wow. needed, I didn't need yeah. Theory and Waller against the uh, the OC, Marcus. I didn't need this. My favorite thing is after the OC loss is when I think it was even Corey. Or so it says, well, now they can focus on the NXT type. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes. Mark, what was this match, Marcus? I don't understand. All of a sudden, we have to use the Good Brothers. <laughs> we, we've learned that, you know what? You know what? Everybody missed on this one. <laughs> they didn't they didn't belong in impact they didn't their short stint in AEW wasn't working their first run in WWE didn't work their second run in WWE isn't working it worked in japan but to an extent where people weren't offended or cared so the good brothers are back but they can't focus on their titles and i guess they're fighting the wolf dogs man i think that's the only thing that's going to happen Manny, and they're no, probably going to win. Man, I'll ask you this question. Did you enjoy the segment that took place backstage with Kevin Owens, Dick Aldis, Pretty Deadly, and then Randy Orton, who showed up? I mean, it was funny to me to a certain extent because I understand where Pretty Deadly is coming from. Although they don't remember they lost last week when they had a chance to be in WrestleMania. No, but they're talking about they, – they went in and going, we're talking about the match that isn't happening, and that's us not being at WrestleMania. So they know they yeah. lost. <laughs> they know they lost. <laughs> They're aware of this. <laughs> but they but don't, I don't think it's right. I love the callbacks of I in this arena, I punch one, I punch two men with one punch. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and then, you know, and then they, he they, everybody it. sells as well. It's like Randy, I told you I could do it. I told you I, I could do it, Randy. I just want to point out Nick Aldis ain't shit just letting that happen though. Well, he has one arm, Eric. And what then, else he do? Let, let's, let's get to a moment where I know <coughs> no one is going to say this anytime soon or any anywhere, but this is, I like to call this is the Vince's right segment where you have all the people that he released and then Triple H rehired, come out to the ring. The, uh, 
I mean, is this Street Profits enough? Yes. First of all, Street yeah, Profits. The Street Profits have never been released. No, I'm not talking about that, Marcus. I'm not what talking the about that. Before you even get into what the fuck were the Street Profits wearing? They Man, look he... like a they look like a paying tribute to men on a mission with the color scheme. <laughs> and what the fuck was Bobby wearing? Manny, first of all, Bobby <laughs> Alpha was off. His, I felt that Montez, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh, Montez and Dawkins were dressed like they were the blouses in the pickup game. I didn't know what the hell that was. <laughs> I was like, the blouses. I, I, I was like, what is this? And then, like, Doc like kept the gloves on. He kept the gloves on like he was Mike Jack. I was like, nah. But then the authors of pain, and then, you know, the only hope of a white woman came out of Scarlet to get Marcus ready for the show. And then they didn't even have a picture of her and carry across. I was like, I didn't need this match. Didn't need it. Luckily, the Street Profits won, though. Luckily. Did Cross come out? I don't think Cross came out. He came out. He, he came out. out. I don't he recall him out. at all. He was out oh. there. Okay. I, 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 for some reason, I remember El Ring being in the way. Being old and in the way. I yes, remember Scarlet. Scarlet. The one shot they had of Scarlet, he blocked her in the one picture they had, Marcus. Okay. <laughs> but I didn't hate this match. I just think that, you know, there's nothing... There's nothing really there. It's just, Marcus, I don't understand what this, we've been in this field for months, it feel like. Marcus, ages. I, I couldn't get past the outfits of the street profits. He found was in the segment, for God's sakes. Yeah, but they went to the back in Bobby ugly ass suit. Chate said he looked like he was a drug dealer. And I agree. No, 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 he didn't look as good. Drug dealer didn't wear those type of suit. He looked like a homeless man who still got donated a suit to go to a job interview. And this is but, all you know, they had. The, the he would have been thrown about, out of your courtroom, Eric. The, the funniest thing about this entire <laughs> segment, though, was that like when this match ended, it was like 9.35. And I'm like, oh, okay. And the next thing you know, I'm like, oh, what do they got left? And the next thing that happens is the entrances of Roman. Then you had the entrance of Cody. And I'm like, how the fuck did they get 30 minutes worth of TV time which is interests and them talking, and then the worst thing about it, they didn't really even say anything that was groundbreaking. Eric, today to be ain't shit, and I, I, I guess you're saving the best segment for last because I, I will get into that in a minute. Well, why well, am I not allowed to talk about this this match that no, no one cared about? Go ahead, Betty. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, go ahead, uh, brother. Uh, what's that? What's that, brother? That should be used every time Betty, the good Betty, brothers come Betty, out, thank, Betty. Thank you. Thank I know this AOP, but it's sight. <laughs> thank you, Manny, for your insight. This is, this is sponsored by whatever the hell Manny's eating in his dry ass burger without uh, anything in Betty, there. Big cheese and bread. Delicious. It looks delicious, but I'm saying, you know, I like some I like some pickles and shit on mine. I, I like I like lettuce, tomato, and tomato and and pickles on there. Man. No, nah, Betty. That's his, that's, that's, that's also too much like not, In this video, it looks like nacho cheese or something, Betty. That's a heart attack. The cheese, the cheese oh, there. Wait, 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 I'm not pointing out. The cheese that are there. Betty, Betty, be careful. Because Betty, we don't want you that, to lose your that, burger. I was worried yeah. that the burger was going to tip over. Is that a well done burger too? You don't get it medium, or do you not get you the option? I don't know how they. It's cook. fast it's food, Mark. You don't get no choice. Juicy. It's juicy. Take so another Marcus, bite. Take another just, goddamn bite. Just like bite. I was disappointed on Monday Get Night Raw. Get Manny the screen by himself. Like he take a bite of this burger. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. Just like juicy. I was disappointed and then look at the on Monday Night go. Raw. You said. That, that, the con- that the contract signed between <laughs> Gunther and Sammy did not resort in a table flipping. I thought this segment between Roman and Cody was quite civil. It was a little too civil for me. I didn't like anything in this. I, no, I won't say I didn't like anything. It was fine. It was fine. But that's not what I want. That's not what I've been expecting from Cody Rhodes talking about what he's been saying overall about uh, Roman's cousin. And it's not what Dwayne's been saying about Cody on the show and in socials and in concerts. This seemed taint. It seemed like two guys who had an agreement of, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I agree. Oh, I hate you. Oh, I don't like you. Seth Rollins ain't shit. I enjoyed I that part of it. I beat your ass. We beat you. You don't, you don't trust him, huh? But uh, I felt like this segment was just there. And as we alluded to earlier, I thought Roman came off better on the Pat McAfee show, unscripted, than he did yeah. this segment. Because he was edgier. He was edgier. He was talking about all types of things. And he felt like the tribal chief in that segment. Instead of today, he felt very neutered. He felt like the big dog. He felt like the big dog to me. So 
there any truth to the rumors, Manny, where they say that a lot of talent was upset that The Rock was able to say whatever the hell he wants to say, but they have a lot more restrictions when it comes to their promos? I mean, Eric is The Rock. It is The Rock. He says whatever the fuck he wants. He brings in the people. He brings in the money. Yeah. There, there's three people in WWE history that I would say they have carte blanche to do what the fuck they want to do. The Rock is one of those people. Steve Austin is one of those people. And John Cena is one of those people. Anybody else is out of line. This is what does I'm, I'm talking, No, man, stop, stop. You made the rule. You made the rule. You weren't bringing this man up ever again on this channel until something's resolved. You cannot bring in that rule in two days. You're, you're, you're arguing with a drunk man, Eric Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I, you fucking drunk. I, I just Damn, feel like right. this, this, it was a fine segment. It did, it told the story more. But I felt that it was lasting, lacking some je ne sais quoi or something like that. And then when everybody showed up, we knew I knew that Cody wasn't alone when Jimmy and Solo showed up and they didn't get in the ring and kick Cody's ass and they walked around to Roman. I was like, oh, all right, here we go. I mean, it was what it was. I think Roman would have been better off getting the former NYPD or suspended NYPD officers on Cody this time around. I think that would have helped this case. Or whatever oh, Mello was dishing out this week. for that on Monday. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's okay. Now that we're in an hour of the show, I want to talk about the segment I want to talk about, Eric. And I know this is your show, and I'm moving on real no, quickly. Marcus, but... I told you to talk about what you want to talk about. What you want to talk about? Eric, I can't believe you skipped this on SmackDown. The police were involved, Eric. The police. In Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia. Marcus, Marcus, a Marcus, shouting Marcus. black, a white man portraying a black Marcus. man is shouting outside AJ Styles Mar- Marcus, in Marcus. the middle of an interview. Marcus, yes. I did not, I did not skip it, Marcus. I just knew because you were so upset about NYPD, I knew eventually you would bring this up, Marcus. <laughs> I knew the segment was going to be something when I saw AJ Styles for whatever reason in his gym being in a room wearing a fucking do rag, and then. This this segment became yeah, very yeah, gang. Yeah, it became very gang related because AJ started yelling, "You don't do that shit. You don't do this in Gangsville. You don't do this in Gangsville." And then LA Knight was like, "It's on site. You better have the police here because I'll be back here tomorrow if you don't show up." And I'm like, <laughs> "Well, Wendy, well, Wendy is holding AJ back. Yeah, yeah. Wendy, get out of and, here, and then, Wendy. Considering that I works in the courts, I I works in the courts. I works in the court. I works Why in the you court. become an old slave? I just want well, to know. I'm the court, son. How Wait, was you should WWE? Then. When did you fired? How, how was AB, How was WWE able to get body cam footage? Like how were they able to get the officers' body cam footage? Yeah, no, 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 no. They said is, they said specifically that we lost footage because the cameraman fell down. Suddenly. They got to body cam footage, so they go from the in in police car footage, and then they go to body cam footage, and suddenly the cameraman's got back up, and we've gone back to no body cam footage, <laughs> footage, and it didn't make yes. any sense. It Can did I also not say make though, any sense. I'm going to say, this, say right this right now. I didn't care because I was I'll laughing. Say, I'll say this right now. <laughs> I, I want LA Night. Mark, give me my solo screen. Give me my solo screen because I need you, LA Night. You are to in the solo. show. You're oh. LA Night. You a bitch. You was just blowing your horn. You couldn't even go up to the doorbell and walk into his house. Triple H went to a man's house, threw a man out the window. You a bitch. That's all I got. I oh just want to say, I wish AJ would have sicked the hounds on him. <laughs> he should have got the hounds. <laughs> Get the dogs on him. Sick the dogs on him. Yeah. But, uh, Eric, you're in the courts, and I've been waiting to ask you this question since I saw the segment. Okay. LA Knight was causing a ruckus on someone else's property. He was. He committed trespassing, potential... Uh, I'm assuming he was trying to commit murder of some kind or no. assault. Good old-fashioned disturbing the peace, Marcus. Disturbing the peace. Okay, the but hold on. Day, both him a- and AJ could have been... Because they were making threats, so they could have been charged with criminal threats. But why wasn't threat. AJ? So when he was, when he was on, the, on the hood... <laughs> I told you, <laughs> AJ started to attack him. Yes. And then AJ said, I'm the homeowner, and that suddenly got him free reign of not being arrested. So I don't understand <laughs> then, what's going on told him, you continue to... Honestly, yeah, guys... No, but he said, if you continue to act up, sir, I'm going to have to take you in, too. And can I'm going like, to wait a minute. No, this, is, this is the one thing I was thinking about to my whole self. Uh, Ellie Knight was arrested, right? So, mm-hmm. does that mean that his car is still in AJ's driveway? <laughs> no, they told yeah. it. They would have told it. They would have told it. They would have told it. Oh no! If I paid this tires before too. they told it, I'm slashing the tires. I peed in his uh, his dashboard. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. 
You don't do this in Gangsville. You don't do this. You don't do this in Gangsville. Shit. Oh. Uh, so, my main thing, and, and, uh, there were no charges pressed in this situation. AJ made sure that he gets WrestleMania payday, yeah. as he did. But something has to be done with LA Knight yelling, I'm doing it today, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Back to that car. I'm going to continue to do it. I'm going to continue to That's do it. Good. I don't care what That's that man good. does. Yeah. Yeah, he said, yeah he, he said if he don't show up next week on SmackDown, I'm gonna show up here again and do the same damn thing. No, but my question, Eric, how does uh the law work? And this is I know this is Georgia laws, and we are in California, and many's in the UK. Laws may be different, and depending on your location. But if I attempted to murder somebody in their, their home, murder, Marcus, no, I, I don't know, but attack. No, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If, he had a chair. <laughs> I think he had a chair, and he was waving it around. Oh, he had nothing. I, he had nothing. He had nothing. Marcus, Marcus, oh, Marcus. No, he LA Knight. My horn. Marcus, I will tell you this. From me watching the footage, Marcus, and I'll be totally honest, technically, in my opinion, all charges would have been dropped against LA Knight because clearly, from my review, AJ was the aggressor. All LA Knight was do- doing the driveway. He came to that man gate at home. He came to the band home. He just blow the horn, and AJ came out full of hell and started fighting him. I mean, AJ <laughs> initiated everything in this situation. Technically, Eric, AJ he has should neighbors. be arrested. He has neighbors, and he was disturbing the peace. He was. He was. Yeah, fight, but that's not give AJ the right to come out with his horse. ass. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with that said, how would the uh, law work, Eric, if some... Okay, let's say he's the terror of the peace. Can one man decide, okay, I decide not to press charges, and then everything that man did who you against you is dropped completely? Well, like, the that it, man could have broke some windows, or he could he disturbed the neighbors, too. I feel like he shouldn't be in the city of Gangsville for a bit. <laughs> so, the thing about it, first and foremost, yes, what has the world come <laughs> to with all this white-on-white crime? So white-on-white crime is, is a cult the, wrestling. The whole, the whole idea of people dropping charges is inaccurate. No one can drop charges. You might not show up to testify, but it's up to the state to determine if they're going to file charges. I would say if I was a district attorney and I reviewed the, the footage from the, <laughs> the rest camps that I would not have filed charges against L.A. Knight. I would have filed charges against A.J. the homo. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> A.J. was the aggressive one. Yes. L.A. Knight was in the room, and he was disturbing the peace, but that does not entitle somebody with a do-rag to come out there and whoop your ass, which A.J. did. You just want to put him in jail because of the do-rag in Atlanta, no. don't you? Marcus, Marcus. <laughs> you, try, you try to sum him up with all Marcus, the black people in Atlanta. Your, girl, your black new he's, he's, no, he's, he's, he's trying to stop a Hulk Hogan. He's trying to stop yeah. a future Hulk Hogan by <laughs> taking away I mean, the so So broken was March safe again this week, Marcus. Your new being queen is still safe again. But I'd let you know Fallon Henley is coming for her ass. I can't wait for when that moment happens because it's going to be me against you. But at this time, LA Knight. Yeah, I, I hope it's more. I, 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 I can't. It's one of those things where I wish AEW did more because it does give me a reason to come back next week to see if AJ gonna show up and what's gonna happen. Because now they got well, beat down some sight. Well, AJ deserved this ass whooping for one taking that sixteen hour flight to Australia to go hit me with a chair. <laughs> see what's that? Oh, it's beat down on sight that yeah. you win the space so much. Probably full of coach or first class. I don't know how he got there. I would also point out, El Luchador is right. In games where you just have a gun dude with a sewn cotton eye show playing in the background, I didn't understand why AJ didn't get his gun. Need cotton eye Joe. I've been there a long time ago. Where he did should've... he come from? Where did he go? Where did he come from? Cotton eye Joe. Cotton eye Joe. <laughs> I've been saying, he should have just got his gun. But like, was that AJ's wife? Was that AJ's wife or his daughter? But like, he could have got the no, dog. That, that was clearly Wendy. Wendy. That was clearly Wendy. Wendy. Wendy, and we all know Wendy. Samoa but, Joe introduced us to Wendy. But, but but the thing about it, this is just this was like bad police work. It was just like unexplained shit on NXT too. When you know Dragonoff just was abducted, but he just came back in his destroyed screen. I don't understand what Why happened. You cop- was that. Cops need to turn up, turn up to NXT and just take Tony D away. <laughs> Met- Betty, that was a straight the one up thing, abduction. The <laughs> one thing that I want to point out is that <laughs> when. Been when uh, they were in the parking lot, I was worried about Fallon Henley. I was worried about uh, what's her name? Whatever her name was, Kailani. because I was like, the parking lot Kailani is dangerous. Jordan, Kalani Jordan. I was like, damn. 
I'm assuming. Why am I the only one that's able to determine can... between these two half black women? <laughs> because it's yeah. Kiana James and Kalani Joy. It's hard for us. It's hard. It's really difficult. Their names are too similar. Manny, I'll be honestly, Kalani Joy ain't did shit enough for me to remember her name yet. She ain't. Wow. Yeah, I said wow. it. How dare you? What? I stand by it. How dare you? I wait for her to that's do something. Next, see the next Liv Morgan, man. See, I remember, I remember Soul Roka because I know that's Marcus that Black, Nubian that Queen. That's she Marcus is. Black, Nubian Queen right there. My princess. I, I, I have a poster of Soul Roka next to Mountain Luther King and Malcolm X in my house right now. Right in the middle Marcus, of Soul Roka. She said I'm back. I misread it because she didn't say it loudly. She just, I just mouth read. And I know what I thought I saw. And I was like, this is I'm definitely black. Marcus. <laughs> Marcus definitely said, saw this and went, Salt Rocker said she's black. <laughs> uh, she's bigger also, and blacker. My, my last thing, whoever was the producer for the match between Becky Lynch and Nia Jax, you should have let the match end it with the uh the 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 the, the Becky's book in no. to the table. That no. was it. No. I didn't no. need to have Nia stagger over into perfect position to get a lay no, down to the No, Ed, no, no. Haven't you ever had a, a t- exhausting day at work in front of your desk and you just leaned over and went and shit? And imagine <laughs> your day getting worse if someone dropped a leg on that neck. I'm just saying, <laughs> that's a rough day. That is a rough day. Nia and, was exhausted beyond exhausted. And I want to point out also, I am extremely excited that our truth is going to get a WrestleMania moment. He's going to get a WrestleMania payday. Shout yes. out to that. Yeah, I mean, also just point out. I also just to point point out. This Sanga, you need to be fired. You need yeah. to be fired. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah. I, I mean, I hopefully WWE Not send me a list. Like, like they should, they they should send it to the WWE universe. Hey, you know, WrestleMania season is coming. We're gonna go on our European tour, but we also know this is a season when you release people. So please vote on who should be let go. Karrion Cross, Arthur Payne, Paul Ellery. I'm looking at you. Ooh, who is your number one? Who's my number, number one? one to be fired, who's the number one? Who's the number one on your chopping block? Oh, and all the data be, and you can't say Lexi King's beard because we don't know <laughs> if he was good or bad. Damn, I didn't even get to rate Lexi's King this week because he didn't show up. I know. I was upset about that too. He was name dropped though. He was name yep. dropped. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I have to go to the roster. Who would I need to let go in this situation? Because. I mean, I'm you not gonna... just say B Fab and we'll move on. No, because that's Betty's. I'm not going to take Betty. Mark, who are you going to let go? Huh? B Fab would not be my number one on the chopping block. My number one on the chopping block, like you said earlier, I believe is Carrie Cross. Before the Authors of Pay, before Ellery, before the Good Brothers, I'm going with uh, Carrie Cross. I just think there's nothing there anymore. He's damaged goods or whatever it was there. That glimmer. There was a glimmer of like, this could be a star. I will point mm-hmm. out. Apollo Crews and Ashanti the Adonis are in the running. Oof. I don't feel like you'd notice if they got fired. Oh. I want to say, <laughs> I want to say, the good. <laughs> I want to say the good brothers. I bet you know right now. I bet you guys right now. No hands down. If I have my point and I have my, thing, Ava's gone. Ava's got. Ooh, Ava. ooh, you you making Ava. a political move? Ava, fuck the rock and his daughter. Ava's go. And no also, and also, I would like to add my number two. Would be close to uh, to where you say it. it isn't NXT, and I know they just resigned Trips? the man. No, 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 no. I believe well, well, can go. They can go too. Uh, uh, well, you brought them up. I forgot about them, but no, Sean Spears can go. Oh, he can go too. All of that. All, hey, whenever I saw my TV, I want all of that gone. All no, of that. You know what? Top of the chopping block for me, and then if you're talking about NXT, top of the chopping block, who's provided nothing, has been on the roster for two, two, three years now. Von Wagner needs to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, he's provided I, I, nothing. Yep. And, yep. I, I, and 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 you know what? Somebody got. I free think he him. stays before OTM. Uh, Cameron Grimes has to go. I don't know where he's at, but Trevor Lee needs to go. You know, mm-hmm. he needs to go back to TNA. I mean, I like the boy, but he. But can can I point out three weeks ago, guys? I forgot we he had, was there. Man, we you went w- deep. We had a WWE <laughs> backstage <laughs> digital exclusive where we had Ashanti D. Adonis and Cedric. Being talking to each other, they can also leave because I don't know what happened to them. Where they at? Dante Chin can go. Hey, don't you dare! Don't you dare! Dexter Loomis can go. Someone has to lose to make these people look good. I think you could. Uh, you could let go of Eddie Thorpe. Why you gonna give it another? No, 
Hi, Eric you, Dorman's going on me. You can let go of Eric and his wife, so Ivar can be the man no, and he can be without you them. Rid of, you, can't rid of, you can't get rid of the, the reindeer horn. Yeah. I would just Hank, fire Eric. Hank, Hank, and, and, have, Tank, Hank and Tank can go. Yeah. <laughs> provided you can be, yeah. Provided you can, provided you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you keep Hank, is it Hank or is it? Yeah, it's Hank. Keep Hank back on the security. Leave him back. Go, go back. Let him have his job in security. Can't be a wrestler anymore. Josh Briggs can go. Fuck Josh Briggs. I prefer Jensen. Let him. Go. I believe he's gone already, Alucha Dark. <laughs> I believe that's not his gimmick name. I don't think that's his gimmick name. <laughs> he hasn't gone. I think he's gone. No, he's still. He's still I think he's good. I no, think he's good. No. They've been trying him on um house shows. He's still he's still listed, Mark. Wait, he's still wait, what? Yeah. Yeah, they've been trying him on oh. house shows to try and make him. I'll tell you Maddie, this, I'll fire all these people to bring Velvet T Dream back in a minute. Maddie, I'll tell you I'll that let you know right now. I think it's time, although that household will not have any money. Me Chin can probably go in this situation. No, I already I, I already told know. Marcus. I told Marcus on, on Thursday. What's her face? Uh, Roxanne Perez can put a blue fucking streak in her hair as much as she wants and think she's going to be Sasha Banks. She ain't going to be no Sasha Banks. You know who she is? She's Meechin. She is Meechin, and she could get released if she carries on the way she goes. Hey, and I know this might be controversial, Manny, and I'm sorry when I say this. You could probably let go of Nikita Lyons, too. How uh, dare you? I can't, I can't invest in that. I just can't. How dare you? We need the soft spoken black woman on NXT. Oh, no. She ain't black. <laughs> can, can I tell you something? What? They they did an audition uh, audition tape to release the key to lies this week where uh Petrovic was throwing her kicks, and then you come to Lola Vice throwing her kicks, and I was like, Nikita's kicks look horrible compared to these two women. That's really horrible. They were Lola Vice was throwing daggers in those kicks, and yes, she shook her ass in the end, and I may favor her kicks over Petrovic, but I'm just saying, those were daggers they were throwing. I want to see those two girls kick each other. Nikita lies when she's doing this. You know, she can go. But I, mean, I do I, need her black woman status, though. I And, and I hate to say this. <laughs> Tyler Baton and probably can go. And them? Who's new? Pete. Pete Dune. Pete. You gonna get rid of Pete? I just don't... I don't think Pete is gonna excel in WWE. I just don't... Betty, you would agree he he's probably... In he's still in his 20s. No, but you know who I think is going to get released? And I think we're... I don't think... I wouldn't say we're big fans of them, but I think Edris and Malik... Edris and Malik Blade could be on the chopping block. Because yeah, they're kind of really... just... They're running around with Brindley, Brindley, whatever the rest of her name is. The quote what by they... Buddy... Is, what about Buddy say? When Booker T said, I don't like any of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no reason to say that. Yeah. There was nothing that prompted that. But I 100% agree with him. I don't no, know it was like, man, this is a this is a, a, a an effect to try to really get these guys over. And it's like, damn, I don't <laughs> know work. Yeah, I, I was like, they might need to go because for whatever reason they're not clicking, and and it's just like, nah, you got it. I, I feel bad because, but they they have a they're they're covered a lot of weight. And like to think about it, you could always just release these people. And the next thing you know, you know, it's just one of those things Ooh. where people oh. just show up. <laughs> I mean, we have special guest scripts on our show. I just want to take off my microphone and walk away. <laughs> but yeah, he can go with OTM. I, I just like, but the question is, Marcus, WWE is also doing a little bit what Tony does, having collectibles, Marcus. We have a lot of people on the roster. Um, we, I don't work for WWE. Um, you don't stock. I sold my stock. What'd you get for it? I uh, I made an extra. This is it's booming, and you sell right now. Well, because I, I decided I didn't care about the stock market, and I needed money because I was broke. And when you broke, you can't invest in stocks. I had to pay. A so bill. what did you? How much you get for that stock? I got an extra thirty dollars from what I invested. So yeah, Marcus, let me. Profit. Can I be real, Marcus? You don't make any money if you only own one piece of stock. You make I money if you own the shares. I was just curious about your stocks. Scripps even told me that. He called me on the phone. But uh, you're taking advice and you're taking legal. You're taking stock advice from Scripps. I question. I question your financial profile in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I fire Baron Corbin, by the way, guys. Why? See, after this, after this tag team run with uh, Braun Breaker, I don't feel like he. Mar- Ari there's nothing he can do. But Mar- Ari sacrificed Cameron Grimes. Don't take away Baron Corbin. For what what are we gonna do with him? What are you gonna do with him? He can become a chef, man. That man makes some delicious looking food. No, he he yeah, but he peaked as being bum ass Corbin, and that was it. There's, there's nowhere else to go with this. He can go. I thought he did. I thought he's he done right. pretty well as. As a thing, but yeah, Austin you know what? Can go. Probably... Austin Theory can go too. Why do I need? Why do I need two of them? Uh, Richard O'Shea can go. <laughs> you know what? No, I, I think he'll be the highlight of the night. He can show up every now and then, still give me a good match. Well, I'm for, okay see, like Richard. the last two weeks, I don't know if it's just me, but it seemed like they're trying to push him. Well, Triple H is always pushing him. Remember, he went before he got hurt. He was the most wrestled wrestler on the roster. Mm. He might need to be pushed off a cliff at this point. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Speaking but of I Cliff, think... let's talk about Edge and Christian. <laughs> uh, I didn't need it. Just didn't need it. It was gimmicky. I mean, like, they're closing out their story that was not even in their own, this company. <laughs> this is the only AEW you photo put, you got? If you're still putting this picture up of Jesus. I'm sick and tired of seeing it. <laughs> but would, would, would you, Manny, would you watch the Jesus press conference? <laughs> what? If Jesus were to come back, and, you know, we have Easter coming back next week, I think, right? Yeah. Easter next week. It was a miracle, but then, I, then yeah. I need to question whether it was magic or real. I think the Jesus press conference would be amazing on Easter if he came back and was like, I need a press conference quick. And then he immediately goes, <laughs> and first question, Jesus, what? why did it take so long for you to come back? You said that you were coming back. And this is you were going to say to people. And then I think he's going to get a bunch of political questions. What do you think of Donald Trump? Are you playing me out? <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think we could do that. <laughs> How dare you guys? What? I, but, but I, Betty, do you realize it took Marcus to the beat drop before he noticed it, though? <laughs> the beat had the drop. <laughs> Brother, uh. what? Live for the Jesus Press Conference, brother. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? I will point out. I think this was a very fun show. I enjoyed this entire show. I think we had a good time. Fuck Goldberg, just for whatever everything on site. As Margaret say, fuck the uh, the off duty NYPD officers who was on commission who, who decided to do security. <laughs> the corrupt officers, uh, er- Gainesville er- fighters, Eric the Mellow attack. Er- the oh, Bellow even have to be there. Marcus, no. <laughs> Marcus, <laughs> Eric, I've been playing this. How, wait, Betty, wait a minute. Hold on. Betty, of all the drunk. games, of now all the games drunk. for you to buy, what? It's showtime with Peach, the Sting reincarnation. It's Sting, baby. I wanted to play the last reincarnation of Sting. That looks like Sting with the little peach emoji next to it. And you going like, I don't know what this text message Manny, means. Can I ask a question? Is that game? I've enjoyed fun? it more than any Mario that's been out there. Really? <laughs> what is the Man. game? Is it a, is it a, a platformer? Yeah. She gets a fucking sword at one point. Ooh. How cool is she? And, and, cool. and then she does ninja shit. Cool. <laughs> cool. I would like for the PTA to be a first person shooter. Ready to info mature. Just like, this is wild. <laughs> Shout out to Princess Peach. I mean, she I mean, probably Princess got her own game, though. Hey, this game gonna mean shit as soon as... Um... Manny, What's Manny, look like you crashed, sir. You crashed, sir. What's yeah, going on? Yeah. <laughs> now you've lost all that. This he, he game glitched. ain't gonna mean shit. Hold on. This game ain't gonna mean shit. Okay? <laughs> I want y'all to know this game ain't gonna mean shit. They're gonna mean shit. They're gonna mean shit. They're gonna mean shit. Manny one one step closer to the toilet bowl, Ugh, like that. He Manny, I would love for you to be shot drunk at the bar after a tenth pint, talking about this is a fucking game right here. But you motherfuckers ain't ready for top spin tennis. I'll fuck all you guys up. Check out my back spin. Check- yeah, motherfucker. By the time of the Mark, did you think I'm talking about tennis? I'm talking about the Kia Lions at the, at the bar. Yeah, Manny talking about titties. <laughs> That's what Betty doing. That fucking, that fucking black ass bitch. You know who I'm talking about. You know that big ass one. You making the stallion? No, not that one. The big you know ass the ones one. with the titties and the thighs. The titties and the thighs. No, no, no. 
No, no, not now. Nikki, I'm like, the big she black, the big black bitch. <laughs> no, but, but she really white. Mm-hmm. The one that says not nah, sugar. <laughs> not nah, sugar. <laughs> It's okay, baby. It's okay, baby. Have some pumpkin pie. <laughs> Who grandma is this? Hallelujah. So, 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 Manny, would you highly recommend that game though to anybody? Because is it a sixty dollars game? I would highly, I would highly recommend it. If you get it on sale, get it. I wouldn't highly recommend it. Um, I end up the um, loading time, the loading the times on it. Really shows how bad, how old this switch, how old the switch is. Uh, my coworker at work, he was looking for Hell Divers Two, which was like he was trying to find a physical copy. And and when I was in Rancho Cucamonga, I saw one for him, so he gave hey, me money. Yeah. Hey, before you, I, I, you know, I'm out the video game loop. Explain to me. Mark, what you the need to get back to Diver. What Mark, the hell's a Hell Diver? Mark, are, I don't know. Are people going on boat? Are there people going on boat finding zombies in hell? And they go underwater to get the zombie fishes? No, Mars. If, if I base Hell Divers, man, he's a zombie now or some if, shit. If I base Hell Divers off hell of divers. what, uh, sounds like ice road truckers. The game. I don't know what it is. <laughs> hell Divers. Oh, maybe they dive into hell and they fight demons. No, I think they're or, digging know. and stuff. <laughs> I don't care. I want to dive into the hell shit. I want a diver simulated game. I'm sure it exists. What's oh, the no, game I'm drowning. Hell Divers. That sounds made Name up. That sounds like a Tubi movie. <laughs> Name for you said, hey. Yeah, Manny, have you seen the latest episode of Hell Divers? No, but I saw, I saw the incredible. previous one. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if we are recommended, so I recommend X Men '97 for nostalgia reasons. When that music kick in, Cyclops is a badass, guys. He's back. I'm the only supporter of Cyclops, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's Wait, back. To watch that, do I have to go back and watch the entire... entire no, Benny, because they give you run. fucking... Previously, yeah. this is what happened. They give you backstory. That's all you need to know. Previously on X-Men. So I can give you the premise right now if you want the quick rundown. So the last season, Charles Xavier, quote-unquote, died. And now the X-Men must carry on without his existence. And Cyclops is having a hard time yeah. running the team with a pregnant Jean Grey. <laughs> Dinner. Yep, you get all of that, and it, it's just, it's just, uh, and then they just continue to wreck shit with their powers. Wolverine sounds like he has cancer. What are you out there doing that voice? What do you mean? Whoa! Oh shit! That's what you sounded like. Clear your throat, baby. Drink some water. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, hope you this is a really fun show. The first two episodes are really good. I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff that's going on, and it has some. Watch. It has something that, you know, most wrestling don't have these days, storylines. And Marcus told me that my boy Gambit had to finish making his plate of food before he could go. He had to make some beignets. Because Cyclops tried to get the team in line. And it's like, we got some shit to do. And Gambit's like, hold on, not before I do my beignets. And he wearing a crop top in the kitchen showing off his abs. And you're like, you know what? You're out of control. You're out of control, Gambit. Marcus, you have no discipline. Mar- 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 you have no Marcus, discipline on Professor Marcus, X. Marcus, Marcus, first and foremost, you know if you had abs like that. to do that. Mar- if you had abs, you would be with a crop top or no shirt on, Marcus. Don't act like you wouldn't do it. Oh, I would too. In the booty shorts. Like, you can't make what's Marcus, you know, can, I, can I point out, Marcus, I knew it was something I forgot to do. On Darby Allen's last match, when he messed up his foot, how would you rank those booty shirts? Because I thought those were the worst booty shirts because they just really stood out. They were like stone washed. They were stone washed. I didn't think about them. Maybe those were the original booty shirts. How are you rating the... a man's booty shorts, Eric? Because he How far be wearing... is that if you slipped out? I'm the drunk one on this show right now. Yeah, Why on. are you rating booty men in booty shorts shorts? I am going to say this. I watched the documentary Freak Nick on Hulu. And there's a whole segment dedicated to Donnie Allen and his booty shorts. Just saying. <laughs> thought about that was the thing that was in. And I thought about Darby Allen for whatever reason. As these women are back in hey, the Mario, so. You a freak, brother. You a freak. I am! Anyway, um, I think the real world is more interested in wrestling, though. J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar and Drake are all beefing. We're going to get a triple threat at WrestleMania. I can't wait. I don't even Drake's going to get bodied. That, that Drake's taking the pin! Drake's taking the pin! 
I don't even think that, that he's ready red dart. That, that, did Betty fall asleep? No, he's all right. He's all right. He's sexy. Uh, what do you think of the uh, the J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, and uh, Drake I don't think beat? that gets over there, Marcus. I don't think they care. Damn. Damn, there's a diss. They everything. got their own rap Damn. stars. Damn it. I'm saying 2024 is the year Black America tears each other apart. So, Manny, what part <laughs> did you get? Going on? Manny, I would like, because we got about uh, 50 seconds left. What, what, five we? Pints, what five pints did you drink? What were the brands? Or was it all I the drank same? Two thing? pints of Camden Hells, which I regretted the moment I found out they had Estrella on tap. English is I was furious. And then I had. Wait, uh, did you want Estrella? Yeah. And I didn't realize that, I had it. You want that- on tap oh. someone told me it's upstairs. I was like, what the hell are you doing to me? <laughs> I didn't know you was a Stella guy. No, not Stella. Estrella, Estrella. is a good drink. Estrella. Estrella. It's, a, it's another drink. I don't know. I, I have, when I've I went to sit in the air, air as I flex on you guys, when I sat in the um, VIP suite of the Clipper game, they had free Estrellas all in the fridge. I'm, I don't know who think you sucking see. to get these tickets and shit, but you know what? Keep living your life, brother. Keep living your life. Because you I saw, saw your, your... I was your... sucking last week. My techniques <laughs> on point. My techniques on point. My techniques gonna take me places. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Except out the apartment, you stay with your I don't, brother. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think The Rock is rewarding you for good dick sucking. I think he's just going to be, move on, little bitch. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it, he rewarded me with, you know, this part of our NDA. <laughs> Mark, if, if, if you had an NDA, you already evaluated it. Just want to let yeah, you know. Yeah, no one watches our show, so we can get away with it. No, that's Wednesday. Oh, the, the streak continues. A dig at ETE. It happened at the end. I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> but I got it in. To be Come fair, Eric, head. as it stands, you've currently got a hundred more views than ETE this week. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what happens when I actually plan and organize a show and have clips and shit. No, that maybe was I last should... week's show. He's talking about last no, week's show. He ain't got to know. You need you show. need a drunk person on the show. <laughs> that is incoherent. Well, I'm telling you, what really he's put in is when people try to figure out why the fuck Marcus got that boot in the background next to his little bead chains to a baseball pitcher, Nakabor. I don't think Tyler. anyone asked. Did anyone actually ask in the chat? No. No one cares about my shit that's back here. It grows each day. That's what it's too said. bad bunny hat somewhere that I haven't added yet. Oh, yeah, whatever. Fuck guys, are, you, are you guys ready for the watch along, though? Two days of WrestleMania watch along. They have to be two days. You've got you got to fit in a stand and deliver too. When is that? Is that on my birthday? It's at nine in the morning on a Saturday. No, your oh, birthday's oh, on Friday. Friday. Your birthday's, your birthday's on, Friday. on Friday. Yeah. Where I'm going to say I'm going to attend the event, and then the last minute I'm going to flake on your ass. Well, there's an event for my birthday. <laughs> no. Oh, you spoil it, man. Shate, that's a surprise. Yeah, because I told Shate to surprise me. Ugh. There ain't look, no event there. Uh, they, they sh- you know what, Eric? I'm gonna tell you this right now for the record. We don't give a fuck about your birthday. I don't give a fuck about my whole <laughs> birthday. The I'm going to celebrate Randy Orton at Easter. Huh? What's your Easter? What's your Easter Sunday plans, Eric? You gonna resurrect the dead or what? No, I'm going over to Randy's Orton house to celebrate his birthday. Oh, okay. You know, April Fool. You guys ain't hiding eggs? Nah, we don't hide no goddamn eggs. We don't. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll go through all my wrestling pictures and, and then one day uh, Jimmy will be like, this is the picture I want. I mean, I know he wants that Magnus picture. Manny, I'm going to get that shit to you somehow. Somewhere. Autographed by Manny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be the latest short that's on the channel where I draw on that picture. <laughs> Manny, go scratch his face. Hey, Manny, I'm going to say this for the record. Short set when people draw and stuff do very well. Shout out to Rhea Ripley for coming up with another drawing that did well in his shorts. Many don't release yeah, many shorts I mean, these days, but the ones he do, they hit. This one hit. So, so it's funny. Um, I know it was one YouTuber or somebody said I came across a video where it was like they were saying that shorts actually ruins the uh the views for your regular content. It's something like it kind of messes up everything with the audience. Like YouTube is so fucked up right now, it's crazy. People are upset. And everything yeah, when then it comes explain to the Untitled Manny and Marcus show. Because that seems to be thriving with shorts. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't understand what's going on with that show. 
I mean, we actually have a fan base. And you know what, guys? I want us to take a moment right now. And this is a very sincere moment. No joking. No no gimmicks right here. Let's this take the show if we ain't going to take it. If we got to be serious, it's bullshit. No, no, right. no, 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 no. It's not bullshit. Let's take the time and realize. <laughs> this this, this, this year, sounds like he's going to bury E.T. <laughs> no, 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 no. Last year this time, I think we had 300 subscribers. We're currently past no, 24,000. I think Man, we had don't, more. don't ruin the story. We were on the verge of 600. I think we were on 600 at this point last year. I don't I'll know. Do out, I didn't do shit. This is all Manny and Marcus. I didn't. This do is mostly that. Manny. This is all Manny. This is all. This is all Rhea Ripley, to be honest. Uh, no, it's all me. But someone has to put this job. I'm giving the credit to Rhea Ripley and WrestleMania. That's three million views for you. That's one video. Wait. So March 25th, 2023. Uh, allegedly, we had 566. Hmm. You know, that's better than I thought we did. And, you know, by the end of April, we were at 20,000 or whatever the fuck it was. And we were just past our 24,000. We're in the Jack Power era of the Sharpshooters, guys. 24. I never watched that show. So, Mar- so before we go, Marcus actually set a uh, goal before WrestleMania to hit 23,000. We're currently at 24,200. Oh, I, and I think we'll hit my goal of 25,000 before WrestleMania. <laughs> and if we do, Manny's going to take his shirt off, spin it like a helicopter, and scale North Carolina for no reason. Just yell that shit out. No, huh? I'm going to really... North I'm Carolina! By myself, I'm going to make a show called ETE by myself and get more views than the actual ETE. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like your eyes. Yeah, can I ask a question? Yeah. Have you been using the spice? Your eyes are really blue right now. No, because it's reflecting <laughs> my shirt from the eyes. I know, I know. But uh, it is written. It is you. Marcus, whoever happened anyway. to your Hurt Business shirt? Where all my other shirts are. Man, this is a bad picture, Marcus. I'm not going to even... Uh... Can you just end the show? Okay. Anyway, we hope you Wait, guys enjoy. Which picture is it? Is it the picture of him at the beach? Because that's a mean photo to put out. No, Manny. It, this no. is not as bad as the picture... Uh, oh, I can't find it, no, boys. Go. It's not as bad as the picture at the beach. Because, you know, that showed off his titties and stuff. But, uh... <laughs> it ain't a good one. <laughs> Do you know what? The best picture of you that you sent me of him is the pancakes photo, which I now made his contact photo. <laughs> the pancakes photo? Yeah, because oh. it looks like an album cover. Like Mark is about to drop some hot cakes. You put pancakes. parent to advisory on that. You put parent to advisory on that thing. That looks like a hot album. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? It's, it's it's just one of those things that Marcus. We gotta live. The, we gotta give the audience what they want, Marcus. And I know what the audience want. They want more grand I'm about finale. To blow us up. I'm about to blow us up. Nah, I'm Marcus. Us up. Where Don't the do fuck this, is the bomb? No, Don't we're out of here. Thank you guys for tuning no, in. Marcus, we're blowing no. up. No, we're Marcus, blowing no, up. Give me the bomb. Marcus, Where's Marcus, the bomb? No, nah, Marcus. Marcus. I know what mm. happened. Brother, uh, what's that? What's that, brother? How dare you, Eddie? <laughs> I was about to hit the button. Meet Marcus. You may know him from the Untitled Manny and Marcus show and the Sharpshooters Wrestling Podcast. I hit end stream! You may know. How's this still he's going? The story of last summer, living in his car, and now he's lost all his money in Vegas. It's ridiculous. Help Marcus by donating to the Sharpshooters Wrestling Podcast or going to storefrontier.com forward slash DSPN and buying some of our merch. That store doesn't <laughs> even exist anymore. <laughs> uh, brother, uh, what's that? What's that, brother? 
You know, I hit <laughs> and I don't understand why I didn't end. <laughs> why you look like Swerve Scott? Now Swerve when I drive. I don't care if I am at Disneyland. Anyway, stay sharp, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Ready you put it back up. When did um, Shane Taylor cut get here? We <laughs> goddamn it. We <laughs> goddamn it. You <laughs> people. You Marcus, people have gone too far. I can look at the other video clips. I have no problem embarrassing myself, Marcus. <laughs> I, 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 I'll join you in this party, Marcus. I just want to end the show. Oh, then all you got to do is hit the red button that says in street. Bye, guys. Next I time. did, and it's so.